Our quest to find the best entry-level bike continues. We found this one at Argos, and we want to see how it compares. Argos is a high street retailer here in the UK, and they sell kids' toys, garden stuff, furniture, and apparently bikes as well. A brief look at the spec and 350 pounds seems like an all right deal. So let's go and pick it up and see what's what. Thank you. It's not a bike, that's a box. A very dirty box at that, so clearly it's been sitting in a warehouse for a long time. This is the first bike that we have bought for our entry-level bike series that has come in a box, not assembled. So we actually have to do some setting up ourselves. Therefore, if you are buying this, you know, you, you to an extent are gonna need to know some stuff about bikes and have some tools. Unless there's some tools in there, we'll have to see. Is it a cross bike? It's really green. We have 24 page assembly manual and a 24 page maintenance manual. <laughs> oh, it does have writing on it. Five times six. What's, what's five times six? 36. Well done. They are ghastly bad pedals. They are so crap. They are. I know it, it sounds weird, but they are legitimately the worst pedals that have come with any of the bikes. They're technically one sided. They're thin, they're small. The bearings in them, well, I don't even, not even sure it is a bearing. It feels like it's just metal on metal. They're terrible. As if they're made by Welgo as well. Welgo are a massive pedal manufacturer. They must cost five pence. We run a bike YouTube channel. We do. So I think it's unfair if we try and put this together. Why? We should get someone who doesn't know anything about bikes. Can we borrow you for a minute? Yes, you can. This is Dami from clothing brand Acta Sanctorum in the same building as us. He knows what a bike is. Yes, I do. Has he ever worked on a bike as a mechanic, put one together, fix stuff, maybe even fix the puncture? Unfortunately not. <laughs> These are your tools. Do I get a manual or not? This. You see, I'm good with Ikea, you know. That does not do anything. Got to turn it around. There we go. Excuse me. Thank you. I'm guessing it's this way. My brain has gone blank. But now this is in the way. Do you want to sub in and help? Let's do it. You don't need a manual. This is going to be a long video. It's not going in. And you're saying this is a one-man job. It's hard, Oh my it? God. We are butchering this. It's not going in. This is falling open. Why is the bottom ones going in easier than the top ones? Oh, it's what have you done? It's got no pedals, isn't it? That's not good. Where's the chair? There we go. Thank you. Sorry, what do you call it? The chair. The chair. <laughs> You're selling it, innit? Would you lot stop laughing? <laughs> You're not being supportive. That's definitely going to snap. Interestingly, the instructions are showing rim brakes. This is a disc brake bike, which is clearly causing some confusion. <laughs> Why is the show on a mountain bike? Oh, what's that? This is like playing the crystal maze. Do you know that? Put yourself on the bike. Right. And then see if you think there's any issues. Any anything come to mind? Yeah, this, this oh, is it's upside down. Wild. Wait, is it? Yeah, it's upside down. <laughs> Back to square one. <laughs> you saw something else. That's, that's not what I saw. That's, what saw. that's my fault. That took them about 15 minutes. Yes, the handlebars ended up backwards, but they did identify it. If the instruction manuals were better, firstly, they weren't confused about the brake situation. This has rim brakes on it, and the bike is disc brake. Things could have gone even smoother. I imagine if you're at home and you bought this and you don't know anything about bikes, you should be able to put it together all right, and it'll take 15 minutes to half an hour. So on the crank, there's a sticker saying, turn, tighten, clockwise. What I have now learned from having the lads over here to build this bike is that must be unbelievably confusing, because is it saying you have to tighten this before you use it? If I got this and I didn't know what I was doing, I'd be now thinking, is this bike safe? Do I need to do something? Is this crank gonna fall off? Is this bike dangerous? What the hell have I done? I need to take it back. Where's the helpline? I need to phone the helpline. What it's actually referring to is the pedal when you put it into the crank. You turn it the opposite way that you pedal the crank. Always wear a helmet. No stunting or jumping. We're now gonna weigh the bike. Bear in mind, this is no pedals, no reflectors. So it's a fair test against the other bikes that we've weighed in previous episodes. 13.02 kilograms. Lighter than the Walmart bike, heavier than all of the rest. Straight from the website. Key features, unisex road bikes, alloy frame, 21. Micro shift shifters, shifters, front disc and rear disc brakes, 
rigid suspension, quick release front wheel, steel forks, not included. Wait, what's not included? Steel that, forks? The list just says, not included. <laughs> A bullet point that says not included. Yeah. Not included. Fully assembled, 12.7 kg. They lied. We have an aluminium frame, steel forks. Both me and Jimmy, I think, agree on this. It's not a bad looking frame. Color is quite nice if you're into neon green. It's the only option. Hydroform tubing. The welding all looks pretty smooth. If you want a racy looking bike, it, it definitely looks racy. I drove around town a little bit earlier on today with this on the roof of my car and basically every pedestrian looked at it. It's so vibrant and it stands out, which in my opinion is a plus point. It gets you seen more on the road, people notice it. So it's a 350 pound bike that I bet people look at and go like, I'm gonna Ooh. steal that. I'm gonna steal that. <laughs> aluminium stem, aluminium bars, saddle with a fairly deep pressure relief channel in the middle, which I like. There's a mix of componentry on here. So you have a seven speed Shimano Tourney rear mech. You've got an unbranded triple front mech, and then you have seven speed micro shift levers. These levers are a million times nicer than the Tourney ones. So I'm glad they've gone for these instead. It also means you have all the controls available to you on the outside of the shifter, much easier to reach, and you can access both of them from the drop handlebars, which makes a big, big difference compared to the turny ones where the thumb lever is impossible to reach when you're on the drops. It has cheap mechanical disc brakes on. Unfortunately, both of them are rubbing straight out of the box. The rear wheel was already installed on the bike, so whoever's put this together set it up badly. Same with the front one. You can hear that the disc rotor is not completely true. It is very minimal on the front one here though, and I think if we went outside, rode it a bit, bedded in the brakes, you might find that goes away. I've been riding hydraulic disc brakes for a long time now, and mechanical disc brakes are not as good. They do work, they do stop the bike, they are worse in the wet than not in the wet. Are they better than rim brakes? Yes, a bit, and obviously the rim doesn't wear out. Are they better than hydraulic? Absolutely not. Are you going to have issues with them? Probably not. Do I want them? No. I disagree with you here. I would prefer rim brakes at this price point, hands down. The only thing that does limit you in is tire clearance, which this bike doesn't really have anyway. You're not going to fit gravel tires on this. For this bike particularly, I wish it was rim brake. Gear ratios, I think Jimmy is going to be very happy with. 12, 13, 14. Well, I thought you were going to like the gears, Jimmy. I've just counted the rear cassette. It's 28. They've just got a complicated triple on the front for no reason. I hate the triple, it's absolutely horrible. The steps between it are massive. It doesn't go into the big ring pretty much at all. The easiest gear is not easy enough. It is without a doubt the worst bit of this bike. The shifters, the micro shift shifters are lovely. They work fantastically. The mechs, atrocious. I now remember why triple has been phased out because it's pants, absolute pants. The reason I don't like triples, especially cheap ones like this, look at this. Ugh. Ugh, it's just so much tension. You need to push so hard to change gear. Not helped by having to run a massive outer cable all the way through the frame because they wanted, they've made it internal. But it does work, but not nice. Yes, you're gonna end up with more gears than you would do on a compact using a triple, but there's loads of overlapping gears and this has always been the issue with triples. What many people don't realize is that when you're cross chaining, so you're in the big chainring at the front and a big sprocket at the back, or your little chainring at the front and the little sprocket at the back, you're putting loads of unnecessary stress on your chain and drivetrain. So things wear out quicker, which means the gears that you think you have extra, there's loads that you shouldn't really be riding in and you'd be causing unnecessary wear to your drivetrain. Maybe this is Spectre of the Triple because it's old stock and they've got it cheap. Uh, the problem is if you did want to upgrade it, even the shifters you're going to have to upgrade because it's triple front mech shifter. If you were going to buy this bike and poodle around town on it, get to the shops, maybe commute a short distance, the triple is going to be absolutely fine. You're not going to have that many issues. It's more when you're out in the hills here and you do need a big range of gears and it just becomes difficult and it's a thing you don't want to be fighting with all the time. Wheels are aluminium. It's actually a rim brake rim laced to a disc brake hub. Cup and cone bearings, so you may want to keep an eye on them because they're susceptible to wear. Massively high spoke count, which hopefully means they'll be strong, but quite heavy. Fitted to them are 23 mil tires, so quite narrow. They're probably gonna feel very harsh compared to the 28 millimeter tires that have been coming on most of these entry level bikes that we've ridden in the last few episodes. The bike actually rides really, really well. It doesn't feel slow. It definitely doesn't feel like it weighs what it weighs. It feels much lighter. It goes up the climbs really well. And I think a lot of that will be 
the tyres, although they're very narrow and therefore slippery on slippery stuff, they are actually quite grippy on like dry tarmac or dryish tarmac. It's, in, it's a good bike, it's very enjoyable to ride. The position's very long, the shape of the bars is weird, but not the drop. The drop is okay. They're so old school, these bars, that you can actually hold the side of the bars like a, like a bullhorn, you know, like a fixie bullhorn bar. Like you could chop this off and it's a fixie bullhorn bar. I would definitely change the bar. So the fork is steel, all of the finishing kit is alloy, the frame is alloy. It's got really skinny wheels on, but it doesn't have lots of road buzz. It's actually quite comfortable. There is a paint chip here and lots of paint chips all the way down the rear triangle here. So that's bad. The thing I like most about this bike is that it has a replaceable mech hanger. This is a small piece of metal which bolts to the frame and the mech, it goes in between. So if you do crash your bike on this side, drivetrain side, it's gonna bend the hanger instead of breaking your frame or your mech. So you just have to replace the mech hanger if you can find the replacement one, I'm guessing Argos don't sell them separately, but you'll probably be able to find them online somewhere if you have a chart and you can figure out which one. Or use an emergency mech hanger, they do exist as well. That's a big plus point, especially at this price point, which previous bikes, for example, the 350 quid one from Decathlon, don't include. If your favorite thing about this bike is that it's got a replaceable mech hanger, that is saying a lot about the rest of the bike. Jimmy, there is one massive problem with this bike. I am furious. Can you not tell from my face? It only comes in one size. It also says on the website, 52 centimeter. There is only one tube on the bike that measures 52 centimeter and it's the seat tube. <laughs> now I know why you were measuring it so furiously. <laughs> I was just I looking was like, for the like, 52 why, centimeter. Why do you keep measuring it like everywhere? Suitable for riders with 31.5 to 38.5 inch inside leg measurement. That's a massive range. That's almost as bad as the Walmart one. Today's video sponsor, Wild Socks. 31 and a half. Oh, so you can just fit this. Information that you might find helpful. This bike has a 53 centimeter top tube. So it's between a small and a medium in most brands sizing charts. I think if you're about five foot eight to five foot 10, five foot 11 maybe, you'll be okay on this bike, but it only comes in this size. So if you're taller or shorter than that, it's not gonna work. 38.5. Apparently that's a typical inside leg for someone that is six foot six to six foot eight. That is outrageous. That is no way. Six foot eight. That's two foot taller than you. <sighs> I keep coming back to this one size thing now. Like, I want to say that this bike is fantastic, but I can't if it's only available in one size. Unless you're the right size. Yeah, but you can't say like, oh yeah, check this bike out. And it actually means that 40% of people it's no good for, probably more. I do not recommend this bike because they haven't considered other people. F you, Argos. F you.